Hello and a very warm welcome to the Entrepreneurial Edge. I'm Chris Bishop. Now this week, we have an entrepreneur who hopes to make a fortune out of easing the headaches of those good citizens who want to file their tax returns. This man came up with the software and an application that made it possible for Africans to complete their tax returns on their cell phones. He also claims to have made paying fun and easy. I don't know about that one, but in the studio, we have the brains behind this software Evan Robinson of Tax Tip. Just That's a quick a word about you, Evan. So your background, uh, were there entrepreneurs in your family? Uh, there weren't any. Uh, there were several people who were dissatisfied with their regular jobs. So I saw that and kind of didn't want to be part of that machine. I thought, you know, maybe if I can do things myself. And you've been programming different. computers since you were 11 years old. Yeah. Uh, it, it, was, it was strange. I, I picked up a book in the library which had this kind of code written in it. And I thought, you know, I've seen that application which has an empty screen. Maybe if I type the code into the empty screen, something will happen. And, and it happened. <laughs> and my, my first program calculated your weight on other planets. <laughs> that was okay. Calculated your useful. weight on other planets. <laughs> yeah. What would you do with that information? Just think about being on the other planet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you started out, you were, so you were a young computer man. So that was it from the age of 11. There was no cricket or rugby or football for you. It was... Uh, yeah, very, very minimal sports. <laughs> Stayed indoors. Um, kept out of the sun. Um, but, but yeah, I really enjoyed being able to create things in computer code because uh, it allows you kind of a flexibility that you don't have in the real world. In the real world, you have to learn how to, how to make things with tools and materials and things like that. And you with came code, up you can whip it up. With this first app, uh, so how to uh, calculate your weight on the planets, what are the uh, things that you come up as you were growing um, up? So, uh, so many random things. Um, I, then, I then changed it into a calculator. I made these things which test your ears. I made little little movie things, um, yeah, <laughs> all kinds of strange things which don't have much use. And how much has the technology moved on? We're talking like sort of uh, 17 years ago. Yeah. Um, how, how much has technology moved on? I mean, for instance, I mean, my daughter, she makes a video a day on her iPad. Mm, crazy. Just as part of her day. Yeah. Stuff and then uploads it to the web, I'm sure. Exactly, and, and, and sort of stuff that uh, 20 odd years ago when I started in television would have been <laughs> unthought of. Yeah. Um, I mean, how fast has it moved since you were 11? Uh, well, I mean, when I got started, I was using my dad's computer, and he was always angry that I was on his computer. So I had this, I had this dream, dream idea that I would save up and buy a 386 megahertz, <laughs> um, which you can now get a 2 gigahertz in your pocket as your, you know, as your, as your mobile phone. <laughs> uh, so that's, yeah, <laughs> if I'd known then that, that we'd have that kind of technology. Now, be be before you got into the entrepreneurial role you've got now, you had several small companies on your own. I mean, did, how difficult did you find it? Uh, uh, well, I mean, the, the first one I started in high school doing people's websites. Um, so I did the first few for free just to get people interested and, and get, get a portfolio. Um, I mean, that, that paid for, for some of my university and, and my first car which was fine. I wasn't aspiring to greatness at the age of 21. <laughs> um, but uh, there, then I did, a, I did a, a course in biotechnology, biochemistry, up to master's level at UCT. Um, that was more for my own interest. I, th I thought that I'd become a scientist, but it didn't end up that way. Um, Mother Nature didn't like the experiments that I was doing. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, so I started a few companies in that time. Uh, one of them was an SMS application, which kind of stores a message online and, and kind of sends it out to multiple people. Uh, the one after that was a, an SMS system that bothers people who haven't paid you. <laughs> so it sends them an annoying SMS every minute, every you know, hour, <laughs> every day, 5 a.m. in the morning. Um, but but without, without a team working with me and without kind of complementing my skills, I just have the kind of IT technical skills, um, th those ideas didn't really take off. Because so. have you not found since the age of 11 that um, it's becoming more of an overcrowded market in the fact yeah. that a lot of people are doing uh, this sort of thing? I mean, what are you finding? Yeah, I mean, I, I used to have ideas all the time for things, and then I'd type them into Google or Yahoo Search, as it was then. Um, and then you'd see that someone's already doing it. So, I mean, if, if you innovate on a global scale and someone's already doing it, then you know, you've already got this, this competitor in some foreign country. Um, so, so the kind of only way you can come up with something new is to to make sure that no one else is, you know, doing doing something like that. And at the age of what did you finally hit on this idea, which you hope is going to make you a fortune? Uh, tax term was about two years ago, so I was I was 27, um, and I was trying to do my own tax return, and it was horrible. Um, I'm sure you know that it's <laughs> it's just a, a mess of little blocks on mm -hmm. a screen, and people stare at it, and you know they're not used to that kind of thing. It doesn't speak human language. So we, we kind of replaced all of that and put in its place a simple conversation with a little, a little friendly face, our character tax Tim. 
Mm. Uh, so he asks you simple questions one by one and takes your answers and puts them into that horrible form and shows you kind of where everything goes. And what's, the rea what's people's reaction to this sort of thing? I mean, because it's still, as I alluded to in the intro, a bit of a mm. drudge, taxes and yeah. paying your dues. So, so it's really hard to sell tax to him uh, to kind of foist our message on people because they don't respond because they don't want to think about tax. It's the same as kind of death cover or life insurance. They don't want to think about that kind of stuff. But when they do need us, uh, you know, they type us into a search and they, and they find us and they use us, they rate us 10 out of 10 every time. Uh, they're, they're really excited that, that something is able to help them. And what sort of numbers are we talking here? I mean, our taxpayers in this country, I know the tax base is very small, yeah. but what sort of numbers are you, are you got in your business as so, customers? So, I mean, um, since we started, we've had about 400,000 people, people use our tools and things. Um, currently, uh, per day, about 3,000 people are using it. Um, and as the tax season uh, progresses in this country, it gets more and more, I assume. Yeah, it, it's interesting. At the beginning of tax season, SARS sends out alerts, so everyone pays attention and there's a big spike. And then day, day two, three, and four, you know, that spike goes down and there's kind of a saddle until the last day when everyone goes crazy. But I'm sure a lot of people watching this will see you as an entrepreneur and say, well, it seems a bit too easy. You've come up with this thing and everyone's <laughs> using it now. That's it. There yeah. must have been lots of sleepless nights and problems yeah. uh, getting this stuff developed as software. Just tell us a bit more about it. Um, well, surprisingly, the software was fine. Uh, I mean, I've, I've practiced long enough to, to do software things. Um, the hard part for me and the thing that, that me and my business partner have trouble with is, is, is selling it and getting it out there, trying to kind of convince people to change their ways. Because uh, normally they, they would just go to a tax guy. They mm. just you know, fling it away, <laughs> hand it over, and you know, it's, it's done. Um, so we're trying to tell people that they can do it themselves. There's something new that they can try, um, and, and this is what they should do. But, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, pretty much all the time we're worried about whether, whether this will work out, whether you know, the energies we are putting into something will work out or pay back. Or well, how much of it is a diminishing market? I mean, a lot of the young people I work with here, they say, oh, no, I did my returns last night. You know. And if they talk about it as if they just watched a TV program or something, yeah. as if it's nothing. Is it not the new generation is used to all this technology is going to walk so, through it? I don't know. It doesn't need your help, maybe. Uh, well, I mean, th that, that was initially the idea that we'd, we kind of capture people who are in their first jobs and they don't know what to do. Mm. Um, so, I mean, e-filing has made it easy for those people to, to kind of go online and do it. But the thing is, they don't know what they're missing out on. SARS collects, on all, collects all these documents from different sources that you're not aware of. You don't know that they're into your bank account. And they, um, you know, they know that you paid towards medical and things like that. So if you don't declare that on your return, then suddenly you're in trouble. And suddenly they can start charging you. Um, th they can charge you and pull it out of your bank account, and then you have to go back and find it. Oh. It's, a, it's a charge first, kind of fight later yeah. system. Um, <laughs> and the, and the team scary. Of, of developers who, who work on this as well. Yeah. I mean, I was just smiling the other day. Someone, one of my colleagues was writing a story about the same sort of business you're in. And he yeah. said, we have these team of young developers. We just feed them coffee and jelly beans. <laughs> And they're happy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> is that true, or is it just a, uh, a myth? No. Well, I mean, uh, when you when you say the team, you're looking at the team. Yeah, it's just me. Oh, uh, you are the <laughs> team. All oh, right. So you get plenty um, of both. So yeah. So I, I try to stay away from jelly beans and coffee. <laughs> more more yoga and water. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Oh, well, that's fair enough. <laughs> and um, uh, and also, again, this business is growing. Um, how can you protect yourself? I and mean, we talked about intellectual property. Yeah. And, uh, how can you stop somebody in layman's terms from stealing your idea yeah. and taking it? Well, I mean, people people can steal the idea, and we, we've already seen one one kind of cheap knockoff of it mm. already. Um, but the way, I mean, we went to go see a patent lawyer, and they said to us, "You can't you can't patent things after they've been in the public domain," mm. which makes sense. Mm. Um, but the way that we can protect ourselves is by getting our message out there as, as quickly as we have done, uh, and we've we've kind of. We've hired a, a PR team who's, who's done that for us. They've got us into, into Finweek Financial Mail on Al Jazeera and things like that. So we hope that when people see us, they, you know, they think that we, are, are kind of, we have a big foot in the market already. And your partner as well, um, he's one of the, the guiding spirits as well of tax, Tim. I mean, yeah. um, you know, what's his side of the business? Well, he's the tax brain. Mm. I, I don't know anything about tax. People <laughs> come to me with questions and I send them away. Um, so it's his brain in the machine. He is he is taxed him. It's his. Yeah. It, it, it vaguely even looks like him, the character. Um, <laughs> so so I approached him when I was trying to do my return, and he helped me. So I, I just said to him, you know, would it be possible to take everything you know and put it into the machine? Um, and he said maybe. And so we we kind That's of. That's how you started it. out. Yeah, we, we pitched it to the Google Ambono incubator. Really. And we were one of the first three teams led in there and given funding and, and space to work. 
And so in that time, we created it. Also, again, another thing, a lot of people watching this program are entrepreneurs themselves. They like to know how they can make money out of things. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, make money out of what you do? Uh, well, I mean, our business model is to charge per, per tax return. Yeah. So yeah, to get the finished result, you pay 200 Rand. OK, well, it's as simple yeah. as that. Yeah. And um, you're mainly dealing with uh, the South African Revenue Service, I assume, returns. Yeah. Any plans to go further afield across the continent? Uh, definitely, yeah. Uh, we, we, I mean, we built the system so it's easier to customize. Uh, literally, it would just take a week for someone in, in another country to kind of draw up the whole tax, tax charts and systems in the, in the program. Um, so, so it's genericized. It can be placed in other, other countries. Which sort of countries would you be looking at, you think? Uh, probably Nigeria or Kenya. Those people who are you know, very much connected, mm -hmm. very much using mobile phones as well, and connected to payment gateways via their phones. Um, it, it makes sense to, to be on a, on a platform that has payment built into it. And um, so at age 28, you're hoping to make a fortune very, very soon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what's your plan? I mean, I mean, you want these people who want to retire age 30 or what? That would be great, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't mind. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we've decided to, to kind of keep going at it until, until we make something big out of it. Um, currently, we're, just, we're kind of looking for, for partners who will, who will get, our, get our product out there. And, um, and uh, yourself growing up, the uh, heroes that you have, in the online world, I mean, everyone um, talks about them. They're now celebrities. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, who are yours? Well, I, I, I like what Elon Musk is doing. Um, I think he's he's doing very interesting things. Not not only did he make a chunk of money, but he's now putting it towards futuristic kind of pursuits. I mean, that's that's what I always wanted to do. I, I saw that the I saw the year two thousand arrive, and there were no jetpacks and no no flying hoverboards. And I thought, where is that future? Why is nobody spending money on making those crazy things happen? And that's what he's doing. And um, there are a lot of people out there, even younger than you, um, who are looking in and saying, well, you know, uh, how do I make it in what I want to do? Mm. What's your advice to young entrepreneurs out there across Africa? Uh, I'd say to them, refine what your plan is. Make sure it's unique. Make sure it's something that you're passionate about. Because there's going to be many nights when you, uh, you know, things are uncertain and, and you have to kind of rely on an inner drive to keep you, keep you going with that. Um, then I'd say assemble a team around you who has complementary skills. Because a lot of people, you know, they'll, they'll form a team of two developers, but there's nobody doing the selling. There's nobody doing the finance or legal. So, I mean, complement yourselves with people who know their stuff. Um, yeah. Okay. Evan Robinson <laughs> of uh, Tax Team, thank you very much for your time cool. and insights, and best Thanks of luck with me. making your fortune. Thanks. <laughs> okay, that's a wrap, I'm afraid, for this edition of the Entrepreneurial Edge. Till next time, I'll see you again. From me, Chris Bishop, it's goodbye. <laughs>